My name is Dr. Mashara Delaney, and I will be your mistress of ceremony tonight. Um, I am going to, we're going to follow the order. There's going to be a little small change in the program. Um, we uh, had a delay in the catering, so we're just going to switch that up a little bit, um, but we're going to move right along. And, at, and right now, I'm going to call up invocation with Pastor Vincent Charles from the Pastor of Greater Faith Deliverance Church. Let us bow our heads. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. God, we give you the glory and the honor, Lord, because it belongs to you. God, we ask you right now to bless us, open our hearts and our minds, bless this speaker tonight, that the words that he shares with us echo through our ears, through our minds for a lifetime. Bless each one of us in our respective places. Bless all the young people that are here today, all the leaders that put this banquet and this program together. Continue to bless our leader, Dr. Dunning and his wife and their family. God, right now, bless this food that we're about to receive for the nourishment of our body. In Christ's sake, we pray that the saints of God say amen. amen. And although we're not going to have the dinner, we know that it's already been blessed. So thank you, Pastor. Um, we're going to move right along to the welcome and recognition of guests from Brianna Davis. <laughs> Give Rihanna a welcome. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> um, I think maybe I forgot I was supposed to do the welcome, so forgive me. But um, it's a pleasure seeing you guys' beautiful faces. And the banquet program is for the summer program we did for this following week at Albany State University. And it's for Nariso, it's called College Bound. And I hope you get to meet the lovely 17 campers that are here and you have a great time. So yeah, okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Now we will have the recognition of the campers by the camp staff. Would all the camp staff come up? Come up to the stage? So what they're going to, so what the campers, the staffers are going to be doing is just t telling about each of the campers that they have come in contact with. So they're just going to give a little overview of what their experience has been with the campers. Starting with Brianna. Okay. So we had group one, me and Reggie. And the first one I'm going to talk about is Jasmine. And I think her name explains her to a T. She's such a sweetheart. She's so open. She's such a kind person. She listens when she's told to do something. She came in here with an open mind to learn and to get something from the program. And because of that, I feel like she got the most she could out of the program. You can do that. Uh, uh, I pretty much had a great time with all of um the campers, but um one of the main ones I had um the closest bond with was my home with um Malcolm. He's like he's really one of the wisest teens of his age. He's um he's smart. He um funny. Pretty much a pretty good guy, and I see him going places in life. So we had six in our group. We had the biggest number. Um, the other guy in our group was Cyrus. And how do I, I think Cyrus, I always tell him each time he does something, I'm like, you're so charming. Because he's always just like, well, do you need me to do this? Or you need me to do that? Or you guys, y'all should do this. We have to listen or we have to follow instructions. Or he's always opening the door. He's always saying thank you. He's always saying no, ma'am, or no, sir. And I think manners go should go a long way. Sometimes they don't. But the fact that he already has them and he uses them, I think that that shows that he's going to go far. So, yeah. 
Um, another one of our girls that was in our group, her name was Janae. Out of the whole group, she was one of the shyest ones, but by the third day, she was out of her shell, singing karaoke with everybody else. Um, uh, that's fine. Okay. You want Eddie or you want Prima? Eddie. You want Eddie? Okay. I call Michaela my Kayla <laughs> because she reminds me so much of myself. They keep telling her she's very expressive of how she feels. It's her facial structure. It gives away what exactly what she's thinking. She doesn't really even have to open her mouth. And not just that, I think I think sometimes we overlook with people being like showing their facial expressions and seeming like they're aggressive, we overlook all the kind and sweet things about her. Like she's such a sweet person. She's so kind. Like she's always rubbing somebody's back or being nice or sweet to them. And I think it went overlooked a lot, but I saw her. I saw her being nice to people. I saw her being kind. And I think I think she was just trying and attempting to do something different. Like she came in trying to be better, if that makes sense. Everybody else say. And another one of our boys, his name was Edward. And even though we had a couple of problems with him, overall he did a good job and he really was the life of the party. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. We about to talk about my babies. Group two, wave your hands. All my babies over there sitting in the middle of the table. I see y'all. All right. So I'm going to first start off with my ball of joy, my beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Lexi. Lexi started off excited about the camp. I walked in, and she said, hey, girl, my name is Lexi, and she has been wonderful and amazing ever since. Granted, you know, we had a couple issues here and there, but Lexi is so smart. She's beautiful. She's very determined. And she wants to be a fashion designer. So I will be buying clothes from you later on when you start your fashion line. I'm waiting on it. You can go line three. Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, Thank okay. you. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to talk about DeMarcus. Um, Whenever he first came, he was kind of standoffish and kind of to himself. But as the camp went on, we got to see another side of him. Um, we realized that he was very funny, although he did give us a few problems. Um, he was always funny. And, um, yeah, I think that he's, he has a um, future with um, comedian um, if he stays focused. And so, yeah. Yeah, and just to say a little bit more about Demarcus. Demarcus told me day one he was antisocial. He has been a social butterfly ever since. He has been all talking to everybody, and he's been very interactive with everybody. So don't let the, don't let it fool you. He's not anti at all. He's a very very bright young man, and he's very brave. And you know, I take care of Demarcus like I'm Mama Bear. I get really offended when folks start to come for him and start saying crazy stuff because. I love DeMarcus. I love every single last one of you guys. I would like to talk about my Kayla. Kayla walked in and she was just like, oh, I don't know anybody, but I'm here. I'm here. Um, hi. <laughs> and it was ironic that a lot of people said that she was very quiet, but everybody, a lot of people tend to overlook the funny moments that Kayla had. Kayla has funny moments with every single last camper in here. Sometimes it was sharing a look and everybody just giggle. Sometimes it was she said something under her breath. I always, always try to serenade her. So she could always tell me, Ashanti, the door. <laughs> so, you know, just staring the experience with her. And she's very, very smart. And you will one day be working for Apple and Google. And I want my stuff for free. I just, you know, you got to look out for me. And that, I see her as a little sister. You know, we connected on so many levels. So 
So we talked at night. We had girl talk, me and Mercedes and, and Kayla. And we, we just had a really good time. Um, George, uh, whenever he first got here, um, I realized that he was kind of shy and standoffish as well. But as the camp went on, I realized that he was uh, a gentleman, very sweet. He had a sweet spirit. He was very humble. And, um, yeah, I just would say stay that way, and you'll go far. And George is going to be a future Ram. Yeah, Ooh. that too. He's, he's going to be in the social work department. I see you. I can't wait for you to get here. And the last but definitely not least, Mercedes. Mercedes walked in and told me, I'm antisocial. I don't want a roommate. Um, is she going to be in my room? I don't want nobody to touch my stuff. And just from there, the first day, for the first couple hours, actually, she actually bloomed very fast. Um, after we encouraged her as a counselor, I know Shavala encouraged her, Bree, everybody, actually. We kind of just got her to get out of her shell. And when she got out of her shell, she talked so much to everybody. And people loved her. You know, she has a lot, a lot of kind words. And she's very, very smart. She actually introduced the book to me. And the book I want to, I don't remember the title. I keep saying it wrong, but name the book. So we all know, the ones who know me very closely know I can be very combative. So she recommended this book to me and just, just talking to her. And, you know, she, she inspired me to work on myself in areas that I know that I need to work on myself in. So we, it was a give and take with our relationship where it was like, well, maybe Ashanti, you should look at it from this angle. Or maybe you should look at it from that angle. And she just brought, brought a whole new perspective to my life. So that's my group, group two. Hello, everyone. My name is Marisha. Oh, and my name is Shavala. We had group three. Group three is back there at that table right there. My cool kids. So starting off, I'm going to start with my beautiful and sassy LaPerry. <laughs> yeah, she know. So LaPerry wants to be a pediatrician. Now she already told me she's not taking care of my kids. So um, <laughs> hopefully we can find something else that we can work out, you know. But she's amazing, y'all. Um, she, oh, she has a mouth on her. She's so sassy, y'all. She's amazing, y'all. She's going to be great. I love you, girl. <laughs> Next, I have Shamar. That's little bro. This is our, our Mr. Oh, well, he's, he's coming here in the fall, right? <laughs> so, yeah, Shamar. Computer science, yes, so, um, yeah, um, he already told me I get a free computer from him as well. My, my crew, we got it. We, they all got my back. <laughs> hey, y'all, um, I'm going to talk about Brianna. Y'all, this girl was just, um, she talked about how she did the camp last year, and she just kept referring back, but one thing about her, she was always trying to help. No matter if it, if it was emotionally, physically, however she had to do it, she was going to do it. She was going to get her point across. <laughs> y'all, she um did a little com comedic, you know, thing for us. And, y'all, I still can't get over that her cousin Leg got run over. I'm just so, I'm still just laughing because it was just so funny. And to see her just get up and just be there, um, I mean, girl, I'm proud of you. Because with your story, I think that that's great. Um, the next person I have is Ayana. Y'all, Ayana was one of them ones that I ain't finna dance. I don't want to do nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go home. I don't want to be here. And I was like, oh, my. But, y'all, she came around. She came around. You know, every now and then she'll get up and do a little team building activity. She'll sit back now. I don't feel like it no more. And I was like, what we going to do? So, y'all, just knowing her was just, I don't know, it was something serious. And I really felt that she was just... She was phenomenal. Now, last but not least is my baby boy, Dusty. Y'all, now, <laughs> whew, Lord, the first day, we don't know. I don't know what, what was going on, but when I tell you he made a full 180, 
Y'all, he, I mean, really, he started, if I would give a most improved, it would be the Destin. Because, y'all, he really did what he could do. He tried. I mean, even even though he was mad, he was like, I'm sorry, but I just can't help it. <laughs> and I be like, um, he'd be like, but I'm sorry. <laughs> but, y'all, he is, he wonderful and just a little bit about all the campus, y'all. All the campus was just great and just um. All together, we did a team and activity. Was there, where everybody was in the line, even Mr. Bass, and we had to do this little activity, y'all. And it just really touched my heart that everybody was able to do it. They got mad. It took us a long time to get in two lines, just two straight lines. It took us a long time, but once we got it, and once they got into it, it was great. So we thank y'all. Oh, see. Ya. All right, so I just want to start off by saying that Raylan and I, uh, we served in a different capacity. We weren't able to, uh, to get a group, but we were able to make memories and bonds with uh, each camper. And I, I don't want to just single anybody out, but, you know, uh, I'm glad that you all were understanding that uh, I'm with my internship. And when I came back, you all showed me so much love and, I, and so much respect. You know, I really appreciate it. I just want to thank you all. Uh, I'm going to come back and say some more, but I'm going to let Raylan talk. <laughs> he didn't want me to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I had a great time. Dang, this thing kind of. I had a great time being y'all's RA, and I got to spend time with y'all during the day, some of the days. And, um, yeah, the bonds that I made with, like, Bree, well, she came back from last year, but I've seen her mature and grow so much in that time, and Yana, too, and hung out with Malcolm and Jasmine and Lexi. So I just got to know each and every one of you in a different way. <clears throat> and one last thing, I mean, I'm kind of mad that y'all said that y'all going to give everybody else free stuff. I'm not getting nothing. That's cool. <laughs> it's okay. But on a serious note, um, I do want y'all to give me uh, this one thing. I just want y'all to give me your promise that you're going to be successful in whatever you do. And I want y'all to remember this quote. Uh, it's one of my favorite quotes. It's, uh, it's by P.K. Bernard. And it says, a man with no vision has no future. And a man with no future always returns to his past. So I want you to remember that. And I want you to keep looking forward. Keep seeing your future. Keep your vision in mind and keep it in sight. I promise you're going to go far. Thank you, camp staff. And I just wanted to say, uh, although I didn't come in contact with all of the campers, I did have the esteemed pleasure to come in contact with two of them today, Edward and Justin. Could you stand? Dustin, I'm sorry. Dustin, could you guys stand? I just wanted to say that you, <laughs> I just wanted to say that you guys are, are, are awesome. Um, and you're going to go far in life. So thank you. Thank you for the interaction today. Um, and also, Ms. Jordan had some interaction with some of the students, so, um, and they instantly became her babies. So we just thank you guys for being here. And on another note, and I don't mean to be on my soapbox, if you can just remember one thing, is that everyone in here has a story, but don't let anyone else be the author of your story but yourselves. So you, the only one that can tell your story are, are yourselves. So moving on, we're going to have the introduction of the speaker, Mr. Kevius Bass, Camp Coordinator. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good evening, I'm sorry. Uh, my name is Kevius, and I have the distinct privilege of introducing the speaker for tonight. Uh, Mr. Creed Pinnell. I consider him a mentor, a friend, a father figure um, to myself, and I'm glad and excited he came and he um, took on the challenge to uh, speak to these students. Uh, he was nervous. He told me about how you know what to say to you all and how, how special you all was. And he didn't know what he was going to do a good enough job, but I told him just like he used to tell me, just do it. Um, just a little background about Mr. Pinnell before I go into his, um, his bio. 
Um, a little story about how I met Mr. Pinnell. I was in Riverdale, Georgia, and walking down the road with a lawnmower. And I was about eight, nine years old. And he saw me with a lawnmower. He pulled to the side and said, hey, young man, come here. So I'm like, okay, you know. Um, maybe he want me to cut his grass. So he's, he, that's what he wanted. He was like, can you cut my grass? So I was like, yeah, you know, I've been cutting grass all this time, you know, so of course I can cut your grass. So I asked him where he lived, and he, he pointed out a house that was down the road that was not too far from where I, where, was, uh, where I was standing. And the house that I saw was like a, I thought it was a mansion. And I thought it was actually, it was like Big Boy from Outcast House because we saw him come there for one day. Um, but to come to find out it was a country club. And Mr. Cree owned the country club, and he wanted me to cut the grass. And while I was cutting the grass, you know, he was just observing me. And I was like, why is this man observing me? Why he watching me? And after cutting the grass, he said, you have a great work ethic. He said, I, I, I want you to continue cutting my grass. So that led to me being able to uh, be mentored by him and, um, in ways that I can't imagine, I can't be thankful for, because he taught me a lot of things. Um, everyone knows that I talk really fast and that um, – I have I don't talk as um, efficient as I should, and he has worked with me since I was nine years old as far as getting it together. So he would tell me, you know, you need to slow down. Um, you, you, you're trying to go into business. You can't be talking fast. People have to um, understand what you're saying. Slow down. So that he, he would always tell me that. So, you know, I, I'm still working on it, Ms. Dunn. She's still working with me on talking fast, and she don't put me some speech classes, and I've been um, doing some different um, exercises in order to make sure that I get that together. But he was the first person, you know, to um, really pull me to the side and start mentoring me. Um, but just off the soap, um, the soapbox, uh, Mr. Pinnell, his background is an entrepreneur. Um, he has been starting businesses since he's been um, since he's been running. <laughs> so. Um, he has started just, just a few businesses that I know that he has started. I work with him with it's the um, Georgia Gospel Trust Awards. Actually, the, the Gospel Trust Awards, I'm sorry. And that is a, um, the third largest uh, Gospel Trust Awards in the, um, in the nation. And what it does is it creates opportunities for artists to come out. And um, Bit Artist also um, is on his platform for the, um, for the Trust Awards. He, he nominates pastors for doing great things in the community and just for being great um, entrepreneurs and great um, people within the community. Uh, one of the other things that he has done is he's the publisher of the Atlanta Business Journal, and that is a publication in which uh, it talks about businesses around um, the Atlanta area and around the nation and also around Georgia. Um, and it's put minority businesses and businesses around um, the world on a platform to where people can hear about them and see what they're doing. The next thing is the Georgia Minority Business Award, which is a um, award in which he recognized um, minority owners of businesses around um, the state of Georgia, and many people have come in contact with him through um, his him honoring them. Ashley Mayor Hubbard was honored by by his um, George Minority Business Award. Was it two years ago or three years ago? Two years ago as the Mayor of the Year. Um, the Business Development Initiative, in which is a nonprofit initiative, where he take 14 year olds to um, 21 year olds and he teach them how to be entrepreneurs. He worked with them and he um he 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 molded them into. Um, starting businesses, and he helped them become su successful entrepreneurs. The next thing is he is an author, The Game Plan. Uh, the Game Plan is a, is a book that he uses in order to teach people in the um, initiative, which is the Business Development Initiative, how to become business owners. Um, I haven't read the book yet, but I'm definitely going to read it real soon. <laughs> Um, and then the Boomers Expo, which um, the Boomers Expo is something that he does in order to bring Boomers together in order to um, change some of the things and invest in different things that the Boomers generation um, is doing so far. Um, I would like to uh, welcome Mr. Creed Pinnell up to give our keynote speech for tonight. Please give him a hand clap. Good evening. I didn't hear you. And now you're talking. <clears throat> One of the things that I wanted to say to all of you is congratulations on completing the program. So give yourselves a hand. <laughs> give yourselves another hand. Now you're talking. 
<laughs> you know, it takes a lot <clears throat> for a person to get into a program like this. And one of the things I've done in being down here for the short period of time, I've learned about the Nazaro program. And the explanation to me is something that we all need to share in where you are in the growth of your own individual pro programs. So my, my conversation with you tonight is only you can change your future. Only you can do that. But I look at all of you out here and all of you entrepreneurs in the making. All of you are trying to be the best that you are. Am I correct? I didn't hear that. See, you got to be assertive. You got to let people know that you mean business. One of the things that I've learned that I wanted you all to learn is that you are building for the first time a relationship with your peers. The relationship that you build is going to be one of the most important things that you will take away from this school and your experience while you're down here. What will happen with that relationship? That relationship would turn into so many opportunities to be able to have people that you can call on, people that you can invite to functions. But the main thing is that you have a relationship. And see, when you look at what's happening with starting college, with that relationship here will take you to the next level. And then some, so from that, you know, there are a lot of things that I experienced growing up and being able to do all those businesses has come from relationships. Relationships that I've learned from delivering newspapers to uh, having relationships in college, having relationships with businesses, and it goes on and on and on. The reason I say it's exciting now for you all, for you as a young person, the new stuff that's coming aboard, it's not going back to the old way of doing things. It's the new things that are coming about for you guys, like robotics. I think you have somebody here from the high school in robotics, am I correct? She was here. But robotics, animation, all that dealing with the film industry, a lot of new things are coming about that you all need to explore. So from that standpoint, when you look at TV and film, that's the next big industry in Georgia, am I correct? Do any of you have plans to pursue the film industry? There you go. And what's happening, the big jobs, and not the movie stars, it's the animation projects that are coming about because of that. The other thing is dealing with robotics. It's changing how movies are being seen on the screen. The reason I'm saying this to you is that you got to open your minds to see the new stuff that's coming about. And see, you're, you're about creating leadership positions because you're creating the jobs of the future. Not that you want to have a job for you. I started as a newspaper boy. And one of the things I learned from being a newspaper boy in Virginia, that I had about 50 customers that I had, had access to, but I built my route to over 250 customers because I believed in giving good service. And by doing that, I hired two guys to deliver my papers for me, but I collected the money. And then I used that money to loan money to all my friends who didn't have it. They would say, okay, just loan me a buck, two bucks, but I would charge them interest. So I learned that whole process. And from there, I learned how to do, to have different sources of income new income streams. So start practicing that in your conversation. So from there I had, you know, by hiring these two students, I learned I could get a lot of money from Christmas gifts and things like that. 
And then that helped me to build my program to be able to go on to school. So I paid for my first year of college at Howard, and I went on from there, and then I became successful as a graduate doing that as well, all because of what was introduced to me while I was in high school. Every opportunity presented a new list of opportunities for you in terms of problems that you may face. Look at them as opportunities that you can take advantage of. I used to be, I used to have a business while I was in Virginia. I lived behind a military school, but the students would play golf and they would not pick up the golf balls. So I'd go out on the golf course and pick up the golf balls and put them in the bucket. Pretty soon I had about 15 buckets of balls. So what did I do with those? I rented them back to the kids. They didn't realize it, but I said, well, okay, I'll rent the balls to you. But I'm renting them the balls that they hit the, you know, and then just didn't realize that I was picking them up. So I built a, a big business behind that. So I used all of that to say, even though the newspaper route provided me the business opportunities, I learned through the newspaper route what relationships meant. So I had relationships with the mayor, college professors, all these people. They were on my paper route. And I would sit down with them when I would deliver the papers and talk to them about what made them successful. So we had the conversation. The conversation allowed me to interact with them in their homes. And it allowed me to interact with them outside their homes, in their businesses. Some of them, you know, were police officers. I knew all the people in the town because I developed relationships with them. As a result of that, I learned the college system. In Virginia, the college system was set up so you could have uh, where you went to the University of Virginia or something like that. You had access to the people that made those decisions. You had access to the schools. You had accesses to the military, uh, the military schools. Where they went, when they finished those schools, they went to, 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 to Capitol Hill, all these places because of where they went to school and their relationships. So I'm here to say that a lot of other things happening just besides my personal experience. So how many of you go to Atlanta all the time? OK, those of you that have not, how excited about, are you about the growth of Atlanta and what's happening? So when you look at Atlanta, you got to look at Atlanta in terms of where are you going, going now with the farming industry. How many of you have thought about agriculture as a future? That's the number one industry in the state of Georgia. So when you look at farming, you know, it's just that that's going to be the future in terms of the farming and the drones. How many of you studied drones? Well, I'm telling you, you, these are the things that you need to research. You know, it's not all about the rap music. It's not all about production stuff. It's about the real world and what the offer, job opportunities will be for you. So from the drone agricultural business and, and to, to, to making that happen for the film industry with animation and robotics, with uh, being able to participate in the cyberspace industry. How many of you are familiar with cyberspace? I see maybe two or three hands. Cyber technology is going to change the way all of you are going to react. And what's happening now, how many of you have gone to the airport? Well, the airport is another way it's going to challenge you because no longer will you be seeing buildings 
being built 50 stories up, they're only going to be built two stories up. That's what the developers are doing now to change that. So when you go, people don't want to drive an hour to work. They want to drive five minutes or walk or drive their bikes. But this is what's happening, and you'll hear more about that as you get into that, because what's happening around the airport, you have a new hotel that's right there at the entrance. How many are familiar with the Solace Hotel? Solace, S-O-L-I-C-E. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. I want you to look it up. The Solace Hotel <clears throat> is the new hotel over on the other side of the airport where the, uh, what's the car manufacturer? Porsche. Where the Porsche facility is, that's where the new uh, hotel is being built. You have a number of new hotels around the airport. So start to watch the infrastructure. How many of you are familiar with Aerotropolis? This is a smart young lady. She is on it. The Aerotropolis program and the projects and the Aerotropolis Alliance, these are the things that you're going to have to start writing down and keeping information in your on your computers and looking up stuff like this because this is what's going to help you in your college degree programs. It's going to help you gain access to these companies that want you as individuals to come to work for them. So when you look at companies like Microsoft and all these companies, this is what's happening. They're looking for you to be well equipped in the areas where you need to be. You can't just Go by the normal thing you've been doing for the last five years. That's not going to work anymore. When you look at how many of you are very familiar with the Port of Savannah and the Port of Brunswick? There you go. That's going to be the next. When you look at the port, that's going to, it's creating so many new jobs. Look at the port of Savannah, when they dredge and they're dredging the port to be able to get larger ships into Georgia. Georgia is the number one uh, facility around the world for receiving ships in terms of what's happening coming into Georgia. So the trucks that run up and down I-16, they're going down there to pick up material, cargo, Logistics, how many of you are familiar with the word logistics? Well, I'm glad to see that because that has to be a part of your conversation with recruiters and business opportunities because logistics is going to change the way Port of Savannah, the city of Savannah, and the city of Brunswick will help you operate. I'm just helping you to understand where the jobs are going how they've been developed. <clears throat> you know, in the last five years, over 1.5 million people have moved to Georgia. That means the job opportunities are here. People are moving here for a reason. So they look at you and they say, you've been here all your life, but you haven't done anything. We want to take what you have. So they're looking at you and saying, well, we're going to step over you to get what we want. Globally speaking, when you look at countries like China, you're looking at Africa, you're looking at Brazil, you're looking at countries like that, they're building an international platform to attract the people here. So that's why we're looking to you to be the future entrepreneurial network. And see, as an entrepreneur, what happens? You employ people. You don't just look for jobs. See, when you create jobs, you make things happen. You create a future for another individual because you have the vision. And see, when you have a vision, you can take it a long ways to develop you know, programs for other people. 
When you look at sports, how many of you watch the sports industry? Well, the sports industry is changing because of a black fella in Atlanta has created or is creating this new 200 uh, acre soccer stadium. And all of these soccer stadiums and soccer fields, it's going to be a whole new process to develop an industry centered around the sports industry. He's going to be one of the most sought after individuals. He came away from high paying jobs over in, um, in the um, high tech area in California to pursue what he's doing here. He had to come here and he graduated from, um, uh, what's, the talent? what's the name of uh, Tuskegee. And from there he saw what was here in Atlanta. So he's, he's, he, he, he had the job with the high paying tech job in Silicon Valley and he gave that up to come to Atlanta to pursue his dream. So the soccer field stadiums concept is going to be a reality. It's going to open the first nine stadiums, uh, stadiums this, uh, by the end of this year. So that, let, that lets you know that the jobs are there and the programs are there. And the film industry, in terms of looking at that again, I'm just telling you, look at the animation stuff. Look at what's happening that, you know, so that you can see the other opportunities that are available to you. So, <clears throat> you know, when you, when you come up to Atlanta again, look at the Beltline. Look at the rail system. You're going to have a, um, high speed trains going to Savannah. They get you there in a short period of time. And that's what they're working on now. So I'm just trying to tell you that just don't look at where you are here. I don't know, because all of you are from small towns and major cities around Georgia. But look at your areas, because this is what's happening. The transportation hub, the, the rail systems, all of that. That's what's happening. It's going to change the way everything is done. And then all I can say is I would love to come back to you in a year and say, well, this is done and this has happened. And then we can, you know, share with all the success stories that you all will have. Okay. So the opportunities, your relationships that you build here at Albany State, you're going to do it with other schools. And you're going to have the opportunity to opportunity through Zorro Company Corporation to be able to interact with other students, other schools. And you'll be able to build a national program that can help you help the other students that will be coming into the program. Let's give them a hand because I think it's a, it's, they've done a nice job. And lastly, I want to talk about the politics. And when you look at the politics, you all have a chance to change that because you want to be involved with changing politics. And if you're not involved now, you need to be because Georgia will change to a blue state. It's on its way towards that. So you're going to have to pay attention to the to politics and get involved locally, statewide, nationally, but it starts here locally. And you got to make sure that you're successful there before you start talking to everybody else around the state, but you want to be a pocket that can make something happen. So I just wanted to say that you influence politics, you influence the Beltline in the future, you're going to see why you're going to be located around the Beltline. You're going to see that around Atlanta, you're not going to be able to drive anymore. All that's coming. It's a changing city. And this is why it's important to keep abreast of what's happening. I didn't know what to talk to you about today. So I was saying, well, you know, we need to talk to them about the future. We got to give them a clear idea of what's happening and what's coming to them. Because if you don't get a clear idea of the future, you're going to do the same thing you've been doing every day. 
And that's why it's a challenge to you and it's a challenge to me as well. Yeah, I have the magazine and all that kind of stuff. But, and it's a challenge to me because I've got to come up with something all the time. And when Mrs. Dunnings and I discussed what was happening in, at her facility up in Virginia, I mean, it's a way to be able to bring people together and to, to have companies be able to rent and, and then participate in that. There are opportunities. I just don't want you to shut your minds down. Just open your minds. Now, how many of you travel? That's the most important thing that you could do. If you don't get outside of these areas, you won't see what's out here. As far as Florida, if you even rode to Florida, I mean, that's, that's a change. But you need to get on that plane. Tell your parents, I want to take a trip. Tell your friends that we want to go someplace so that we can participate and see what's outside of what's here in Albany or other parts of Georgia. Because it's a big world out there. A lot of things. You know, and I've had a chance to travel to Africa, Israel, London, Greece, all those places. And it opens your mind to see the new stuff and the stuff that's available for our business opportunities. So I'm saying that to you to challenge you to go outside, check these things out, go travel, get in, get, in, get in your car. You know, but don't sit here and do the same thing you've been doing week in, week out because it'll get by before you know it, you'll be 60 years old and not done anything. That's the worst thing in the world. So how do you have a conversation with your friends? You have a conversation with them because you've done things, you've traveled places. That makes the conversation interesting. So when you have a boyfriend and you have a young lady that you're talking to, Start a conversation about where they've been or what they're doing now. See how far, if you're doing the same thing, it's not going to go anywhere. But when you are doing things, you have a piece of conversation, and the conversation continues to expand. Okay? So I challenge all you students, successful students, you know, to go to the next level. There are people out there that are looking for you to make those changes. I know I'm looking forward to it. I have had Kivius as a game plan blueprint to see what the opportunities can be. And seeing him be successful only means that you can be as successful as well. You all agree? Give Kivius a hand because this is what he's doing to help you. And I just wanted to say I was glad, I'm glad that I came. I'm glad that I had a chance to see you, but I didn't have each one of you introduce yourselves. And when you introduce yourself, what does that do? There you go. And see, when you know people and relationships, through relationships, it'll be able to take you to the next level. And you'll be surprised that you've met me and others like myself, that, have, that are really influ influential in the city of Atlanta that can help you. So through the relationship building, that's what it's all about. Okay? Let's give us all a hand for being here tonight. And thanks, thanks to the president's wife. Thanks to all of you for being here, and I'm glad to have known you, and thanks to Kivius for extending the invitation to be able to be of some support to you as all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pinnell, for that great message. Um, right now, we're going to go right into the awards presentation with the camp staff. Okay, we have a certificate of appreciation for Raylan Brown.
we have a certificate of appreciation for Reginald Coleman. We have a certificate of appreciation for Brianna Davis. Malcolm Davis. Malcolm Davis. to just stand right here in front and then we're going to have a picture. Demarcus Gilbert. <laughs> if you can come on, Marcus. Demarcus. Shamar Golson. <laughs> Next we have... And forgive me if I slaughter your name. Naima Hawkins. Naima Hawkins. Johanna Jackson. Johanna Jackson. Brianna Jacobs. Stephen Knight. Ooh. Lexi Knight. Ooh. Cyrus Lavender. Dustin Marat. Mar I'm sorry if I slaughter. I'm sorry, Dustin. Marisha Maxwell. Marisha. Sorry, it's okay. LaPree Oliver. So, uh, I'm sorry, Perry. <laughs> Ashanti Rowe, please give her a hand clap. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Edward. All right, Eddie. Let everybody give a hand clap for Edward, please. <laughs> Miss Kayla Stone. George Thomas. Miss Shavala Tobert. Malik Walker. And Ms. Brown, can you please sit up here? Michaela Wilcox. Jasmine. Mercedes. Ayana, yeah, take your time. <laughs> and we had a um, a visitor that came with us today is my little brother, Jaden Taylor. Please come up to the front.
Please let everyone get in. Thank you. Can y'all please uh, stand up and please give a round of applause for these wonderful campers. They have been here for a whole week, engaging in our university, exploring our university and learning some great things. So we're gonna take a quick picture and DJ can play some soft music. We're gonna be eating in a few minutes. Um, the catering was a little late today. So um, they're, they're preparing, so I'm hoping that they'll be prepared within the next five minutes. But what we're going to go ahead and do is move on to the program. I'm going to invite Dr. Delaney back up. Now I'm going to have Marisha, Marisha Maxwell come up, and we're going to play a game called Guess Who? <laughs> Everyone can go back to their seats right now. Okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. So we're going to play a game. Do you know that baby? You think they think that's George? <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're going to start. <laughs> no, that's no one, really. <laughs> Who's this? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Junior major. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. I read that so wrong. <laughs> Junior music major from Atlanta, Georgia. Shanti Rowe. <laughs> Who? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> no. Let's see who it is. Naima. Psychology major from Camilla, Georgia. Next, we have. Who is it? It's Brianna? That's me? That's Who is it? <laughs> Mr. Benz? <laughs> Savala. <laughs> Social work major from Cuth Cuthbert, Georgia. <laughs> Cuthbert? <laughs> Woo! Now everyone should know who she looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> you do look mad. <laughs> Go ahead and show them who it is. Brianna, Master of Public Administration student from Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> Sorry, that's just too cute. <laughs> we know. <laughs> Raylan Brown, Health and Human Performance Major from Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> Malik? Malik, is that you? <laughs> Mr. Bass, <Dad>, Riverdale. <laughs> Oh, that was a funny baby picture. <laughs> Next. That's all, y'all. <laughs> to thank Ensoro for your continuous efforts in helping and providing these particular services for these students. Um, I also want to thank Mr. Bass. Um, sometimes we don't realize the logistics that goes behind putting this together, and Mr. Bass worked really, really hard day and night, um, calling me in the middle of the night <laughs> uh, during the day, getting uh, requisitions in. Um, I know that he was uh, probably bothering accounts payable and business services <laughs> to make certain that those things went through. But needless to say, he worked really, really hard for you guys to make this happen this week. So let's give Mr. Bass a round of applause. Um, and just wanted to bring you up. Didn't mean to interrupt your dinner, but oh, I'm going to stand behind the podium. <laughs> Thank you. 
Go ahead. Let's give Dr. Laney a hand clap for her wonderful job hosting this program tonight. I definitely um, would be wrong for not thanking the people in this room. Uh, first of all, thanking the students uh, that have been here today, have um, took a time out of the summer. Some of y'all are doing um, working actually with um, teamwork, so y'all are missing money to be here. So we're glad that y'all came here to get a rich um, experience from this um, College Brown camp. And I want y'all to take what y'all learned from here uh, and take it serious and apply it to your life and look forward to a better future. And uh, learn from um, from your parents, learn from your um, your, um, your the people that you in your family, um, learn from it and be better and be greater than what they are. Um, only you can control your future. You don't have to fall back in the same thing that they that they, that they're in or they fell in. Um, I want to thank in sorrow, um, Monica, um, Carolyn. That's it, right? Uh, Claire. Okay, Claire. Um, you all are wonderful. Y'all came here. Y'all started working. Getting hands on, I, I definitely appreciate you. Uh, please give um, in sorrow a hand clap. <laughs> but thank you all. Give y'all self a hand clap for um, all that y'all did this year. And DJ Trump in the back. As soon as we get done, he gonna turn it on. He gonna turn us up. So adults, go ahead and eat so the kids can turn up a little bit. <laughs> but thank you all again. I definitely appreciate you. Have a great night. <laughs>